वेलकम बैक टू द क्लास ऑन इलेक्ट्रिकल व्हीकल्स एंड हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिकल व्हीकल्स इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द हाइब्रिडाइजेशन ऑफ द डिफरेंट एनर्जी स्टोरेज गैसेस इन द लास्ट क्लासेस वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द डिफरेंट एनर्जी स्टोरेज डिवाइसेस लाइक बैटरी सुपर कैपेसिटर फ्यूल सेल एंड फ्लाईव्हील्स ऑल दीस एनर्जी सोर्सेस वी आर गोइंग टू यूज इन ए हाइब्रिड इलेक्ट्रिकल व्हीकल्स टू गेट द गुड एफिशिएंट हाइब्रिडाइजेशन मींस we are going to combine the two sources so that the overall efficiency of the system will be increased how we are going to select this energy storage device means one energy storage device has a high specific energy another energy storage device is a high specific power such a type of device we are going to combine to get the overall efficiency of the hybrid vehicles will be more suppose if you take the batteries also some batteries has a high amount of specific energy some batteries have a, a high specific power so we can combine these two batteries so that overall efficiency of a hybrid vehicles will be increased in that manner we are going to hybridize the different energy storage devices hybridization of the energy storage device is a combination of two or more energy storages together so that the advantage of each one can be brought out and disadvantage can be compensated by other so if we take the hybridization of the battery and ultra capacitor battery have a low specific power but high specific energy whereas the ultra capacitor has a high specific power and low specific energy when you going to hybridize these two it will give a high specific power as well as a high specific energy to the Vehicle. When you are going to hybridize the two energy storage devices, one is high specific energy source, another one is a high specific power source. Now we are going to combine these two. It is given the power to the converter. It is giving power to the load. Suppose in high power demand, if the high power demand is available at this at load side, so these two sources has to supply power to the load. High power demand is nothing but a eh, when the vehicle is moving in a Steep climbing area, a gradient area. By that time, it requires a high power. So these two sources has to supply power to the load. In low power demand. When the vehicle is going on a normal road, it does not require that much of power. So by that time, high specific energy is giving a power to the load. In that duration, if excessive power is there, then that power will be charges the high specific power source because it is already discharged. when high power demand is there negative power the negative power is available only during the regenerative braking suppose the regenerative braking is occurs now the vehicle is giving a power back to the source how this power is flows means first of all the power is charging the high specific power source next the remaining power is goes to the high specific energy source so in this manner these sources will be supply a power during the high power demand and low power demand and negative power demand the dark arrow in all these figures is showing the primary power flow the dotted arrow is representing the secondary power first of all primary power flow has to meet then only the secondary power flow will be existing in the block diagram now here the different energy storage devices are there one is battery another one is a super capacitor or ultra capacitor fuel cells and flying wheels we can make the hybridization between the two batteries also so one battery has a high specific energy another battery we are combining these two to supply power to the vehicle so one more important hybrid is the battery and ultra capacitor battery has a high specific energy but low specific power or the ultra capacitor has a high specific power whereas a low specific energy this is a very best example a hybridization of the batteries and ultra capacitors when you going to do the batteries and ultra capacitor hybridization just connect parallel across the supply here we can take it as supply or the load if you observe this first graph this is the variation of the supply current by battery as well as a super capacitor which are connected in parallel at 10 seconds increasing load current nothing but up to here it is not supplying any current at 10 amperes we are increasing the current supplied by the battery as well as super capacitor how this current is meet by these two devices means 
This red one is nothing but a current supplied by the battery. This one is nothing but a current supplied by the super capacitor. At 10 seconds, the battery current will be slowly increases, whereas the capacitor current will be increasing from the high value to the low value. Nothing but a, the capacitor will be simply operating as a filter, which can supply the peak value of the current to the load. The same manner at this point, the load current is come to the zero, the battery current will be slowly decreases, whereas the capacitor current will be suddenly increased to the negative value and slowly. Sum of these two is, is equal to the load current. If we observe the voltage across the parallel combination of the battery as well as a super capacitor means, this black one shows the, the voltage across the only battery. At 10 seconds where we apply the load across the battery and super capacitor, the voltage will be suddenly decreasing from the 105 volts to the 95 volts. At 30 seconds, the voltage again will be raised to the 105. Now, if we combine the battery and super capacitor, the voltage will be slowly decreases and slowly increases. There is no sudden change in battery voltage. See, in this manner, the super capacitor will be filter out the peak value of the current given by the battery and normalize the battery voltage. But in this configuration, the super capacitors are not used fully. Our ultra capacitor energy cannot be used fully. That is the main disadvantage. Now, if we come to the one more configuration where ultra capacitors and batteries are connected with the help of two quadrant DC to DC converter, nothing but it will be operating two quadrants. Whether you can transfer a power from the battery to the super capacitor, super capacitor to the battery, and overall this power is given to the load. This is nothing but a two quadrant opposite of a DC to DC converter. One more important point here is that even though the voltage rating of the super capacitor and batteries are not equal, then we can combine these two by means of this power transition. Whenever we are using this converter between the ultra capacitor and battery, now we are going to use the full energy level of a super capacitor along with a battery to supply the current to the load. Whenever we are using this converter, we can actively control the power flow between the ultra capacitor and batteries with the load. And one more important point is that in place of battery, in the long run, we can use a flywheel also to obtain the high efficiency, compact and long life storage system for EVs and HEVs. So, these are the simulation results of a super capacitor along with a battery with a two quadrant DC to DC converter. See here the black one is representing that this dark black is representing the variation of current supplied by the battery. Light black color is nothing but a, the current supplied by the ultra cap. So from this graph we can say very easily that the energy flow between the ultra capacitor or super capacitor to the battery and load effectively controlled if we use the two quadrant DC to DC converter between the ultra capacitor and the battery. See, in this manner, we are going to hybridize the different storage devices in EVs as well as a hybrid electric vehicles. Thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask in the comment box of my YouTube channel.